So today we're in Royalton, Vermont, and we're at the farmer's market, and we're here capturing portraits from residents in town. So hopefully after they buy some beets and uh, <laughs> meat and jam, we can take their picture. <laughs> My name is Nate Larson, and I live in Windsor, Vermont, and I'm part of the Why We Stay project. Uh, my sister and I share a lot of really similar interests artistically, both photography and design. So when this project came up, we just kind of naturally had a lot of synergy. Um, you know, there's all the normal sibling stuff of, you know, who's, who's in charge of what and pecking order and everything. Gotta make sure, you know, we keep each other in place. I'm coming for you, Chris. Except they have no idea how close I am. <laughs> Oh, these are getting in. Photography is as close to kind of instant gratification uh, with the creative process as you can get. I, mean, I love writing, but writing's kind of painful <laughs> sometimes. And the, I don't really have skills for, say, painting, and, and pulling off a theatrical production takes a lot of people. So it's one of those like self-contained creative things that you can do where you have a lot of control and you can do it quickly. And, so that's, it's always been kind of the, the go-to spot for me as far as a creative outlet. I started with my son when he was little, but his eyes, his eyes were, you know, they just pulled you in. And I found that when I could get a photo of him with his eyes in focus or, or whatever in focus I wanted in his face, that it was amazing, you know, and that having captured that moment where he was just looking right at the camera and those eyes were in focus. My brother calls it, called him eyeballs when he was little. But yeah, that really spoke to me, you know, getting, getting that sort of off-camera moment on camera, um, which is, again, what I love about moments when I'm taking photos of anybody, is when I can get them to be on camera, but just be themselves. My name is Chris Kamek. I live in Windsor, Vermont, and I am a designer and a photographer. You know, he was doing photos and I was doing photos and that's, you know, when when this 250th year for Windsor was coming up in 2011, this idea was hatched to get portraits of 250 people in Windsor during that year and make a commemorative book. Capturing these people in a way that's not formal, but is like a quiet moment that isn't like a Polaroid and isn't with a huge group of people. It's them quiet in their moment. It's just about them. You can't do anything but look at their face or look at their eyes and think about them and who they are. It's now printed in a book that has been shared. It's at the Windsor Library. It's a great archive of a time and space like you know, we will forever remember Windsor in the summer of 2011. We can look back at these photos and say, oh, that's what we were wearing, or this was popular, or, oh, remember when that building was there or wasn't there. What, what really hit me and why we needed to continue was um, seeing some of the people who had passed away whose portraits we had taken and how strongly people responded to having those people captured in those portraits and how much it meant to them. And now we're in Royalton in 2013, fast forward a little bit, capturing 100 residents here in Royalton and we hope to keep adding towns to the project as we go. If you go to whywestay.com and you can go into Royalton and as we've taken photos, we've started uploading them and putting little sound bites. You can click on a person and then click their audio and pairing that together is really simple but it's super, it's powerful and interesting. I love, it's like walking around in a brochure all the time, it's beautiful. The people here are awesome. I just seen the people when I had the flood, a hundred and something people were there. They were just stopping and running over and helping. Awesome. You know, just in that tiny little clip, you hear him say that, and, and, and you hear him say it, and you look at his picture, and you get the whole picture. You know, you hear him, and you see him, and you think, I know who Duffy, you know, I, I don't know him, but I get, a, I get a sense of who Duffy is.
and we're capturing data, uh, basic data, you know, age and if people have moved away and if they have moved away, what brought them back. And, and, I th and we're capturing in a way that's sortable and exportable and can be shared with other groups. The more people we capture, the more important that data is going to be. So there's definitely a, a kind of an ethnography that underlies it now that didn't before. The more towns we can add, the more we'll be able to answer some questions about, you know, what, what keeps people in Vermont, what makes people leave, and if they leave, do they want to come back, and if they come back, why? I also love this, yeah, cradling, you know, when you're creating, it's like a really comforting feeling when you're inspired by your area around you. Because I live just, my house overlooks this lake, and yeah, this, it's, it's an inspiring atmosphere. I feel like there's a really cool creative vibe, an interdisciplinary vibe that's on the move, you know, kind of, and, and there's support for it with each other. And, and Vermont as a state, I think that hap it hap it's not like, ooh, it's weird, there's all this creativity. I mean, Vermont is so supportive. Okay, all right, Vicki, let's see where the sun is right now, peeking through the trees. All right, move to your right just a little bit. Okay, there we go, perfect. Okay, I'll just turn my camera on. It feels just like home, I ain't got no home. It feels just like home, I ain't got no home. It feels just like home, I ain't got no home. I've been traveling through this world all Feels just like home, but I ain't got no home. Feels just like home, but I ain't got no home. Feels just like home, I ain't got no home. I've been traveling through this world all along. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having us. Stay tuned for more. Thank you so much.